What I'd like to do is to talk about 12 lead EKG, and I want to set up just a foundational knowledge of EKG. And actually, this is going to be a series of videos where I break it down into things like the conduction cycle, Itobis triangle. One of the first things I want to do is give an index of those smaller videos. But before I even get to that, I want to set a context here. And that context is I want to be very clear that I'm no MD. I have a PhD in neuroscience, and I have never interpreted an EKG that actually mattered towards somebody's health. What I do have is a background in electrophysiology, and that drives me to understand EKG on a theoretical level. I also teach community college to pre-nursing students, pre-HIT, pre-rad tech, basically pre-professionals in the health industry. And I think that because these students are going to be seeing 12 lead EKGs more and more, it would be nice if they had a foundational knowledge. It would also be really, really nice that if, I, if I'm ever in the hospital bed, that that nurse has a basic understanding of what a long QT is, what a broad QRS is, what a QRS axis is and make sure that it's not no man's land so I'm not going to die. So I guess I have some selfish motivations here. One of the things that I've done is I've looked considerably at EKG and EKG tutorials and it seems to me like most of those videos or websites or things, they're going to tell you what the leads are and they're going to jump right into a patient's health or a diagnosis. And that seems to leave an intervening step for me. Or maybe that's because of my background in biophysics. I want to actually understand how the electrical signal is picked up by the EKG and how that electrical signal is changed by changes in the heart. So that's why I'm putting this video out here. Is I'm hoping that it's a unique perspective that shows people the foundations of 12 lead EKG. Most of the content that I've gotten is from a book called Bioelectric Magnetism and this book is freely available available on the web. It's at http www.bem.fi. I assume that that means bioelectromagnetism in Finland. So www.bem.fi backward slash book backward slash index.htm and you can read the book yourself. I'm also using some of their figures so I'd like to give them attribution for that right now. Some of the caveats, two additional caveats, and then we'll get started, is because I want to create a complete foundation, there might be a couple of steps here that you haven't heard of in a normal, if you've gone through a normal, a normal education on EKG. Like, we have to talk about something called septal depolarization if we want to understand the Q wave. So let's start with the introduction. What do I want to do? The first thing I want to talk about is I want to create a video that says, what are the disorders that can be diagnosed? And maybe we'll just get that out of the way now. We'll talk about those. You can determine electrical axis, so is the voltage traveling through the heart in the correct direction? And that's important because electricity is going to precede muscle contraction. And you need the muscle to contract in the right direction so that you can fill your ventricles and then push blood out of the ventricles into the systemic circuit. So that's important. You need a correct sequence. You need a correct electrical axis. You can diagnose hypertrophy, which is thickening of, wall, of the heart wall. Arrhythmia is when the heart is beating. Um, erratically. You can diagnose too fast, too slow, which would be tachycardia and bradycardia, any kind of abnormal sequence. We'll get to the conduction cycle here and any abnormality in the conduction cycle, conduction cycle can be picked up with the EKG. Drug effects like digitalis can be picked up, potassium imbalances, sodium imbalances, calcium imbalances will all be detectable on the ECG. ECG. Cardiac so inflammation, Disorders in coronary circulation, when there's not enough blood flow, that will also show up on the ECG. So those are the disorders that can be diagnosed. One of the first things that we have to do, though, is we have to introduce the conduction cycle. And that is how electricity travels through the heart. We're going to put that down here in the middle just because that one's really, really important. We'll talk about Eindhoven's triangle. Eindhoven was the first guy that put his foot in a bucket of salt water and measured these electrical currents through the heart. We're then going to look at how the leads in Eindhoven's triangle detect changes in voltage created by the conduction cycle. So this is going to be kind of a cyclical movie, and that's why I'm drawing things in a circle. Then we're going to put it all together. For the simple leads, and that would be leads one, two, and three. We'll then go into the augmented leads. 
we'll stop at that point and do the QRS axis. Then go into the pre-cordial leads, or sometimes these are called the chest leads. And then I'm going to send you out to something called ECG Library. Or you can go out to various tutorial sites. If you just Google ECG training or EKG training, you'll find plenty of tutorials. Putting it all together with ECG Library. The reason I like ECG Library is he asks you to go, whoever the author is, I'm sorry, I'll, uh, I'll find the website. It's www.ecglibrary.com. He asks you to diagnose a normal EKG. And to diagnose a normal EKG, you basically have to go through and exclude any abnormalities. And he can link to different disorders and show you what the EKG would look like if a person have a, has a arrhythmia or a bundle branch block. How many of you saw this comment that we've got a cycle Disorders that can be diagnosed, we've got to do conduction cycle, then we'll do Eindhoven's triangle, then we'll do how the leads detect changes, we'll put it all together, do augmented leads, QRS axis, pre cordials and we'll come back to disorders that can be diagnosed.